All right, now that we have this and uh, we have a uh, basic rotation matrix uh, under our belt, let's jump right into complex numbers and then we'll go over a relationship between the two. So uh, note that I had done a video on complex or imaginary numbers 11 years ago, but it is a bit outdated and unpolished as it was one of my first videos on the channel. You can see <laughs> the difference 11 years makes. So there it is like that. And this is all in one, <laughs> one page I got. Yes. Very interesting stuff here. So December 21st, 2011. Very, very epic. Yes, a lot of upvotes there. Apologies for that. Anyways, let's jump right in. So let's start. Yeah, so let's now start fresh here because this is just uh, not as clear. Uh, so a complex number is an extension of real numbers by using the imaginary unit or imaginary number unit i. Uh, the imaginary unit i is a solution to the equation so if you have the equation x squared plus 1 equals to 0. So real numbers can't solve this because uh, when you square, you always get a positive number. So in other words, uh, if we move this over, let's just move it over. And then what we get is, and then we're going to get, oh, let's move that over. Then we get uh, x squared equals to negative 1. And then uh, because you can't use a real number, so we'll just say the number is i. So i squared is equal to negative 1, like that. Or you could uh, square both sides, and we're going to get i is equal to, well, plus or minus square root of negative 1. It'd be plus or minus, because we're going to use square root. Um, yeah, when you square root, it just means you're multiplying yeah, two numbers to get this square there. And then uh, when you multiply two negatives, those cancel out and becomes positive. So similar to just the positive becomes positive and negative becomes negative. All right, so that's plus or minus like that. Let's move this over here. And uh, yeah, so uh, because no real number satisfies uh, the above equation, x squared plus 1 equals 0, i was called an end quote imaginary number and still is called that in many places. So uh, complex numbers are written in the form. Yeah, so that's. Uh, that's an imaginary number or imaginary unit uh, num or number unit i. So yeah, that's Wikipedia just says imaginary unit now for some reason. So anyways, uh, I've always called it imaginary number. So complex numbers are written in the form z equals a plus b i, where a and b are real numbers and i is that imaginary unit. The a term is considered the real part, and the b uh, and the b term is considered the uh, the imaginary part. Yeah, so uh, the real one is this a, and the this even though a and b are both real numbers, it's just indicating that uh, a is for the real part, b is the imaginary. A complex number can be visually represented as a pair of numbers a and b, forming a vector on a diagram called an argand or ar yeah argand diagram, where the imaginary axis I'll we'll call that I M is the vertical axis and the real axis re is the horizontal yeah so in other words uh, basically a complex number is just a two uh, two part number instead of just one so let's just draw this out so if you have make this a bit bigger all right so we have this is the real part we'll call this re axis there's the imaginary i m and this is the origin and then you have a vector here and this is a vector is a complex number, so it's going to be called z is equal to a plus b i, where the components are a is the real part, and then the vertical part is the imaginary or b. And so it's not really imaginary; it's just uh, saying that there's a second part to it. So each number will have a second part uh, of this number. Yeah, and uh, an example of adding uh, such a like a second part or property is, for example, let's say you had all the real numbers, and then you assign a color to all of them. So you could be like all the real numbers that are blue, red, etc. So instead of saying they have an imaginary uh, property, we'll just say no, they have color. <laughs> for example, yeah. So in this case, you're just adding an another property, and you're graphing it on this axis. This is called imaginary axis, and so on. All right, so let's go further. So now let's break down the complex number z into its component parts via the angle theta and only consider the unit length of 1 since we only want to consider rotation for now, so we don't, we don't want to deal with the length and so on. We just care about the rotation, etc., from this axis there. 
So let's write this out. All right, so let's draw the uh, imaginary and the real is the real is the imaginary I am. And now we have a origin right there. And so let's say we have the unit length here. So unit length is one, just one to be easier to deal with. And this is our Z equals two A plus B I. All right. And then uh, this is the angle theta. So from the uh, real axis. And this is going to go down dot, like that, dot, dot. And now this, co these components are, this is the B, this is the vertical. So it's a vertical component, and that just makes it with the, well, the uh, hypotenuse there is one. Uh, so we just one times sine theta or just sine theta. And then A is equal to, well, cosine theta as before. All right, so that's, we have that. All right, so that's for this unit uh, length, a complex number. Z is equal to A plus B I, uh, or uh, this equals to, well, cosine A is cosine theta plus uh, B is sine theta I. So in other words, we have Z like that and box that in.